Hello all. In today's session, we're going to talk about how to set up a service fabric cluster in Azure. So let's get started. So let me log into my portal. Just pull this down. I have a Visual Studio subscription. Uh, if you are starting fresh and you don't have any subscription, you can sign up for a free one. Uh, I guess you get a one month subscription for free with about 13,000 rupees as your credit. So you can spin up, you can do quite a lot of work with that. You can't really set up a five node cluster with it because I guess you only get four core or something. Uh, I'm, I'm not quite sure, but I think with 13,000 13, rupees, you can spin up a cluster and, and do quite a lot of stuff with that. So it's, it's a good good way to start. So I've logged into my uh, portal with my credentials and let me try to create a service fabric cluster. I go to the left-hand pane. I have it in my most recently used if you don't have one. So I can just search for it in the search bar. I say service fabric. And the service fabric class comes up. I just click on it. Click on create. Oh, it's supposed to give a unique name for your cluster. Let me just do it as Katari Day. Uh, you can pick the OS for your virtual machines, where those will be your nodes. You can pick any of them. These are the available options. I'll uh, just keep the default one. You've got to punch in the credentials for your VMs. Just do that. And then the subscription. If you have multiple, you can pick, pick how every, everything gets listed here. You can pick whatever you want. And then uh, the resource group, if you have already have one and it makes sense for you to put it over there, you just put it. It's just a logical grouping. So <clears throat> since it is a test project or sample one, I'll just say sample service fabric resource group. Okay, and you can pick the location that you want. I'm going to keep the default one as best US. And I'm going to do an OK. And once I have the basic configuration set up, now it's more for the cluster. You have a node type count. Let's, let's just see. So in a, in a cluster, you will have multiple nodes. So what this option gives does is it gives an option to pick and choose the kind of kind of VMs that you want as your nodes. Uh, you want your primary node, you, you might not want all your nodes to be at the same configuration. You want the primary ones. Uh, we will get into details of primary and secondary, secondary nodes when we chat more about stateful services. But uh, in the natural primary, primary nodes are the one which kind of solves more, more of your request. Secondary nodes are more like backup. So you, you want your in a in a production environment or situation, you want your primary nodes to be more powerful than your secondary one. So this kind of gives you an option. If I tap three, then I can configure my primaries primary node and then I can have my secondary there are totally three to three types of configurations for my nodes. So I'll just stick to the basic one and uh Go into the details of the node that I want. So I'm gonna just say node one. Uh, the second option is durability tire. So let's just click the bubble and see what it is. Durability durability tire will determine the SKU that is stock keeping unit size for your node. This comes into picture where you're kind of doing your capacity planning for your fabric cluster. 
how big your nodes are, how many class, how many, how many nodes do you want in a cluster, and and stuff like that. So when you tap on the bubble, you get the learn more option. You can go in there and check all the details that you want to. And when you're config configuring this for your production environment, you want to consider all this. Yeah, it's it's more like your SQ, SKU planning and how how things turn out to be in terms of pricing and stuff like that. So I'm gonna keep it bronze. That's I think the basic one. So in this case, I'm gonna tap on the single node cluster because Visual Studio subscription has got a limitations of four core. So I I cannot really have a five node cluster because if I consider one single core VM, I would need at least five VMs. So I'm gonna to stick to single single node cluster. Even if you're gonna go for a final cluster, the configuration would be pretty similar. So I'm gonna select I'm gonna select the very basic one as my VM with single core. This with single core. So this isn't really a setup for a production environment. This is more like your dev environment. Just just spin something up and test your application and stuff like that. Yeah. And then you get into custom endpoints. This is important. Uh, these are the endpoints that would be exposed to the internet or the outside board through the Azure Load Balancer. We will see more of this later. So let me just expose a few of it. I like say you can also change this later. So I'll show you where, where we change it. A281, A2. Let me for now just take three. And the next one is enable reverse proxy. Reverse proxy, let's just see what does what this means. Okay, reverse proxy is an optional feature that assists with communication between your application. It's more like you have multiple uh, multiple services running, and if a particular service wants to talk to other servers, not through the inter internet, but internally within the cluster, then you will have to enable this and you're gonna you're gonna actually communicate between services using reverse proxy port and reverse proxy communication i will be talking more about this one when we will be writing our own gateways at that time we will we will come back to this yeah now i'll just enable this and hit an okay there are more options to be set up advanced options if you want to set up your diagnostics and stuff like that right now i'm going to just turn it off i don't want them right now if you have your dns and you want to bring along to your azure then you can do this by setting all these options up uh, when you're trying to set up a hybrid hybrid scenario when you're working on a hybrid scenario service fabric version either you can do it manual or automatic uh, you can pick and choose which service fabric version you want to Target and not worry about the, all the changes or you you trust the service fabric and you you're okay with it Automatically updating it for you. I'm okay with it for now. So I'm gonna just set it as automatic and click on okay so and then This setting is regarding security how This talks about how do you secure your cluster nodes communication between the nodes and the outside world so in a, in a real world scenario, you will have certificates that will be pushed into your Azure vault. And then from your Azure vault, you kind of access all those security settings and put it over here. So that will, again, we will be talking about this one later. Right now, I'm gonna stick to unsecure one and tap on OK. It runs some final validations. And then we tap on Create. It takes some time to create the cluster and set all things up. So it might take about 10 minutes. We'll just come back once it's done.